Hey, Merry Christmas. We are so honored that you're spending this special evening with us tonight. If you're new or you need help or prayer, you can text the word connect me to 411247. That's connect me, all one word, to 411247. We have a prayer team on standby that's ready to pray for your requests as they come in. And we'll be praying for those throughout the week. Also, if you're new, we just want to start off by saying you are loved and welcome here. We have services every Sunday at 9, 11, and 6. Now, most of you got your invite bags. You're going to want those handy because you're going to need those throughout the service tonight. If you didn't, don't worry. We're going to give you everything you need to have an amazing experience tonight. All right, it's time. Are you ready? Let's celebrate Christmas together.
Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little old Jesus asleep on the hay. The so fun to sing those Christmas carols together. You know, we're used to inviting you to the Grace Church building for Christmas Eve, but this year is very different. You've invited us into your home, and that really means a lot to us. God is in your home, and he is at the very center of what's happening tonight. Christmas is all about giving, and Grace Church has a tradition. At the end of each year, we give a yearing gift, and we're going to do that tonight. This year's gift, 100%, goes to the Eddie House, which is a local nonprofit that serves the homeless youth in Reno. Those youth are called the invisible population because they're so often overlooked, but we know that God made and loves those kids, and we want to be a part of the solution, and you can too. If you'd like to be a part of it, you just need to text the words Grace Reno to 77977 and follow the prompts. If you aren't ready to do that or don't wanna do that, that's just fine, but stay in your seat. Something really special is about to happen to remind you of this very special night. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come. Oh, come, let us adore. 
The first time I left home, I moved to Southern California and I played four years of college golf. Competing is something that lights me up. I love competing and it was something that I always wanted to be better at. I was always working towards something. My first three years at Cal Lutheran were so, so amazing. All my coaches on my team and my whole golf team, we'd hang out all the time together and we would go to this country bar in town. Every Wednesday night was college night, so everybody around the area would go and we'd line dance. I never really was great at line dancing, but it was something that was always so much fun. In November 2019, we were at Borderline. It was a normal Wednesday, and I was there with a guy on my golf team and another one of my girlfriends, and there was a moment where everyone heard something and then the room stopped. The Ventura County Sheriff says a gunman opened fire inside as it was crowded with more than 100 people, many of them college students. I remember four gunshots, and I couldn't tell you the rhythm of them, but every time I hear it, even to this day, it's something that I feel. The only thing that I really was thinking, I was staring at my cracked screen, thinking about texting my mom. But I couldn't get there, but I'm staring at it like, how am I gonna tell my mom? <laughs> 12 people lost their lives that night. So my parents drove down. It hit them as much as it hit me that I could have been one of the 12. And it feels like such a selfish thing to say but it gives me so much purpose to live for those that can't. I came home for about two weeks, and when I went back, every time I went to a class, I'd guarantee I'd walk back to my dorm crying. I couldn't sit still, I couldn't focus, I wasn't the same student I was before, I wasn't the same golfer I was before. I didn't know who I was anymore. I heard in my heart, probably the most clear I've ever heard from God before. He said, you are not alone. So my walk through the rest of the semester looked a lot different after that moment. I could see around me that God was showing up and I knew that he was there, but I could feel it inside me. I had amazing coaches that walked with me through every step and I had Cameron the whole time. I had never walked through anxiety or therapy before, and he was right by my side the whole time too. And I still have dark days. There are things that still scare me, but I know that there's a lot of light when I walk with Jesus. And after I graduated, I finished my golf season, didn't miss a tournament, I moved home and just tried to figure out who I was. Because when you walk through trauma, you don't really know who you are with it. But when I walk with God, I know exactly who I am. I felt free, and I had a lot of hope. And in the months after that, I started looking for a job. My biggest fear was that I would go into work and have people not see me for who I was. Especially who I was when I had days when I didn't know why I was anxious. Or I had days where I'd come and have a panic attack that afternoon or something. And the longer I went without a job, the harder it was to figure out where is my purpose in this? What am I supposed to do? I showed up to serve at Grace on a Sunday and I volunteered for production that morning. I didn't know a single thing about any production equipment. I sat down and we talked about where my heart was and I interviewed that afternoon and then the next day I accepted a job at Grace Church. A couple weeks later Cameron and I were serving at Christmas Eve services and he accepted Jesus into his heart. I thought God was using Cameron to help me through the darkness but he was using me to bring him home. If all this was just for that is worth it.
I think I want people to know that everyone walks through hard things, but the way that he uses us through those hard things is unbelievable. I went through what I went through, and I walked through really hard things, but I walked through those hard things so that I could walk with Jesus. I could watch Cameron walk with Jesus. I could watch my family walk closer to Jesus too. And that's more than I could ever ask for in this life.
Merry Christmas. Christmas is an amazing event for many reasons. First, it is a time for us to think about God as the source of all of life. It is a time for us to take a time out from all the troubles that we have, even if it's for just an hour. It is filled with family and fun and friends and food. And I'm not going to lie, I like presents. And let's not forget about all the traditions of Christmas. And then there's this baby Jesus and What's there not to love about babies? But is that all there is to Christmas? About 700 years before Jesus was born, a prophet by the name of Isaiah penned these words, For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the true meaning of Christmas. This verse of scripture right here is the true meaning of Christmas. This child is spoken of by Isaiah is the one who's going to bring this worldwide kingdom. The kingdom is referred to in scripture as the kingdom of God. His government, this government shall be upon Jesus' shoulders. It is a kingdom that will be ruled by God's appointed Messiah who will not be just a redeemer for his people, but he will also be their king. It is like this. At one point, the venue that I'm standing in right now was a barn. The owners have repurposed it to be a venue for weddings and other events. And we have repurposed it even further to be a place of worship. That is how the kingdom of God works. God is repurposing this world. Think about that for just a minute. It's, it's a transfer of ownership. God allowed the forces of darkness to temporarily squat here on this planet. But now... A revolution has begun and is called the kingdom of God. And when did this kingdom begin? It began at the birth of Jesus. It is here now, right now, right now where you're sitting. The kingdom of God is real. It will be ultimately completed at the second coming of Jesus. That's where it will be fulfilled. But it's here now. Christmas is about a revolution. It's about a kingdom. It's about Jesus. The problem is that you cannot be a part of this kingdom until your sins are washed away and therein lies the problem. This is something that you cannot do for yourself. You cannot, you cannot take away your own sin. We're all broken and we all need the Savior. And so it's something that Jesus has to do for you. That's why he came several thousand years ago. It's why he emptied himself of the right to be regarded as God, took upon the form of his servant, went to the cross as the perfect lamb of God and died for your sins so that you could be qualified to enter the kingdom of God and live with eternal life forever and ever and ever. That is such an amazing truth. And tonight, if you would like to receive that, if you would like to enter the kingdom, if you would like to be a part of what God is doing on this planet, I want to give you that opportunity right now. It is not complicated. It's very simple. But what God requires of you is that you have to have sincere faith. You have to have authenticity. You have to have a belief that Jesus died for your sins. So if you would like to pray a prayer with me and enter this revolution and enter this kingdom, let's do it right now. So bow your heads no matter where you are, wherever you're watching from. Bow your heads and close your eyes right now and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm broken. I know that I cannot save myself. I cannot wash away my own sins. And so tonight, I choose to believe that Jesus died for my sins. I accept the gift that he has given to me of eternal life. And tonight, dear Lord Jesus, I want to enter this kingdom. And I pray these things in Jesus' holy and powerful and awesome name. If you receive Jesus as your Savior tonight, you have joined thousands upon thousands who have done it before you. Even those watching, you have joined them. And I want to be the first to say welcome to the family of God. And we have an experience that's crafted just for you. The instructions will be on the screen. Once I was
What an amazing truth that tonight the kingdom of God grew. That is just amazing. And it grew because maybe you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And now, tonight, we have just one last thing to do. And it is an amazing thing. We're going to go home to grace and we're going to light some candles.
Before you blow your candle out, look at that flame one more time and think about the fact that Jesus, the light of the world, brought the kingdom of God and it's right here, right now. Go ahead and blow your candle out. Thank you so much for watching tonight. It means the world to us that you spent this time with us. And if you made a decision for Jesus, if you prayed with Pastor Dan, the best next step for you is to tell someone. And we'd love it if you'd tell us. The best way for you to do that is text the word I believe to 411247. That's I believe to 411247. We'll follow up with you in a few days and see how we can help you as you move toward Jesus. Also wanna invite all of you to come back for the next two Sundays. We'll be focusing on the new year and then on January 10th, we'll start a brand new series called Next Level. Pastor Dan will be teaching that and it will help us move toward Jesus and each other. So just invite you to come on back and be a part of our Grace family. We love you a lot. And with that, I'll just say good night and Merry Christmas.